tucked away in Mc Back with lacrosse friends to the Northeast Invitational, the first annual. And Keith Printup has the first possession of game three on this Saturday between the Woodsman in the white going right to left and the black and purple clad CTC Elite. CTC this morning with a 12 to six win over the main Northman can assure themselves a spot in the semifinals if they can win this game. The Woodsman meanwhile, looking to get their first win in the group. Woodsman setting up for their first offensive set. Rip from the outside. That one's taken by Hara McComber. Looks like Kobe Gibson between the pipes for CTC Elite. Holden. I think it's Norm Isaacs for the Woodsman. We'll double check. So two minute holding call on Trevor Jones of CTC Elite. So an early power play opportunity for the Woodsman. Back up to the top. Thinking shot didn't take it much Mark Henderson. That one ripped from the shooter spot. Gibson with the save. Shane Cook gets into the offensive zone and slow thing, slows things down with CTC on the penalty kill. Gets it over to Cree Cathers. Still 15 on the shot clock, no rush. Tried to feed it through to Cam Simpson. Couldn't quite corral that pass with one hand. He does eventually get it down to six to get a shot. Simpson will fight through a couple of checks. One-handed shot, gets it on target. And that one is stopped by Norm Isaacs. Sorry, Nye McComber between the pipes for the Woodsman. Norm Isaacs backing him up. Outside rip attempted by Drayton Jimerson. That didn't get through. Here's a breakaway chance for Shane Cook. Nice save for Comber. They're gonna say a back in on the Woodsman. So CTC will get the ball and they'll be able to kill. They take their time getting started. They'll be able to kill most of the rest of this penalty. Plays blown in. The ref was on to them. Not gonna let them just sit there and let the penalty tick away before they pick it up. And possession granted to the Woodsman, so they'll have 20 seconds to work with on this power play. Pass didn't quite connect there with Kane Kettle. Big collision near center. It's going to be a check from behind called. So the first CTC penalty is over and they will now go to the power play. We're going to check from behind. About four minutes for cross checkers from behind on white. So that's four minutes. Double minor for the check from behind. CTC trying to crack the goose egg. That one's right in the belly pad of McComber. Fighting through the double team. It's a dangerous spot to be in there for Canute Deer. Canute Deer. I'm going to get it. Sorry. Penalty coming now. Too many men. Two minutes two white for too many men. The man up top is going to say, yep, too many. So that makes it a five on three for up to a, for about a minute.
for TC CTC. Cam Simpson will stamp at the top as the safety outlet. Cather takes that pass, rips it. That's off the leg of McComber. Oh, nice work by Cather to get it back and or open up, block the lane and let Simpson get it. Behind the back pass, Seneca not going to stop him there very often. Nice pass by Trevor Hill to set up Cam Seneca. Seneca goes far top corner, beautiful placement. This is really nice ball movement. You can see Trevor Hill just waits to draw the defender in that four on three set. And as the defender comes, flips around behind the back. You can't cover everybody. And Seneca is the one that's left open and he is deadly. Makes it a one to nothing game for CTC. That'll wipe out the first half of the double minor. It was assessed to Angus LeBourne. And it's Angus LeBourne Jr. So father and son sitting in the penalty box as LeBourne Jr. serves the too many men's penalty. So it's still a five on three. Simpson steps in. That one's tipped away. Simpson will track it down. Whips it across to Creek Hathers. Down low. Chance Nelson Jones to stand in his ground as Nye McComber. Simpson will intercept that at long outlet pass. Seneca to Nelson Jones. Oh, what a play. They're going to say no goal. Face off violation. What body control by Jones to get that one off, but he just gets over the cylinder before the ball gets in. Terrific play, just slight violation. And CTC, not surprisingly, is taking a penalty here. You have to be very careful when you've got a few calls in a row. They were not careful enough, and Nelson Jones is going to the box. Nikki Snow will start with it, as we'll be four on four. They got a bit of a change after the when player was released, and trying to roll in was Knut Deer. Hands there a couple times with Doug Hemming. We're now to a Woodsman power play. We're in a couple seconds, we will be. As Angus LeBourne is released, who's going to the bench, sees his team's getting possession, so he just heads up into the offensive zone. LeBourne, with six goals yesterday for the Woodsman, was absolutely on fire. He's going to get met by Albert Appleton, who wants to make him uncomfortable up in the offensive zone. River Montour will head off to get another power play specialist out there. That ball just popped away from Nicky Snow as he was trying to get a shot and Creek Hathers casually behind the back to Shane Cook up into the offensive zone. Cook will slow things down. He's looking for the cutters. Wisely decided to hang on to it, keep killing some clock. It's a one nothing game as we are eight minutes and change into this first of three 15 minute running time periods. Final three minutes of the third will be stop time if the game is within three goals. Jimerson faked the pass, holds onto it, looks to the far side. Now he will move it over. Brad McGowan driving to the crease. That's got to be a penalty there. They're going to Simpson's going to go after him as McGowan went into the crease, ran into Kobe Gibson. McGowan trying to wrench Simpson's head back and get the helmet off. He gets the helmet, throws it. Actually, that might be Tylen Dibo, I think. Sorry, that's a 66 on 88. Kobe Gibbs is just going to go for a stroll, exercising some goalie cool after being run into. 
Cameron Simpson, who's selling some CTC gear. He's got a uh, table set up. A lot of vendors here at the site. We'll see how the penalties are assessed. So Daibo is in the box, of course, for the Woodsman. Simpson naturally going with the uh, retaliation. Boy, nobody's going to mind that as he goes and stands up for his goaltender. But we'll just see how it goes. I would imagine that Daibo's going to take more time here. Meanwhile, the clock ticking away in this first quarter, first period. Being explained to team reps what the situation is. We're back to even strength as things get going. Yeah, what is the rules on fighting with you, Daibo? What are the rules on fighting with you? So another player has gone in. I think it's Ed Lewis has gone in to the box. So I got white and black for the Woods. Two minutes for roughing. Five, five minutes four. for roughing. And the extra two for goalie interference on white. We're setting up five on four. Let's we'll wait for Kent Lyons to announce the penalties. He's just waiting to get the information from the scorer's box. So they get everything recorded and settled. And Basically what's going up on the board is a two minutes. So the original penalty to Tylen Dybo, and then he and Simpson both get another one. Cathers with it. CTC leads one nothing. They're trying to extend that lead. They go inside to Trace Hill. Up for an offensive shift. Basically taking Cam Simpson's role. Cathers spins out, back door. Seneca, he has the goal. He almost had another one. Cathers tries to put it back. That's what gets away from him. Nye McComber with the short outlet pass. Woodsman pushing it forward. Mark Henderson on the run. Hits the trailer. Nice foot save by Gibson. That shot coming from Deer. Outlet pass, they get it to Hill, Trace Hill. Long pass to Cathers. Oh, Cree Cathers off the far post. Cam Seneca tracks down the rebound. Still just about a minute left in the power play. Oh, trying to get the pass to the back door was Trevor Jones. Didn't get there to Cathers. It's a three on one the other direction. Oh, nice goal. What a finish by Nikki Snow on the run. And the Woodsman with the short handed marker. Really good touch pass. I believe that's Mark Henderson getting it across to him. And then Snow with the finish. We're all tied up 1-1 as we approach two minutes to go here in the first period. We are saying last game was the game of the tournament to date, probably Onondaga and Utica, but this one looking even tighter, more exciting. Again, low scoring early on, just one goal apiece. As we're under two minutes to go here in the first period. And McComber gets an assist on that goal, making the first, making the stop and getting things rolling. Come back up top to Jimerson. He'll hand it off there for Angus Lamore Jr. That pass doesn't quite connect with Jimerson, so that's going to be an over and back. Albert Appleton thought about going, he decides to peel off. And the ball will start in the corner. Possession for CTC Elite. Into the final minute, Nelson Jones got flattened over in the along the side. Oh, there's a big slash right in front of the official. To go McComber gets away with it. Here's a breakaway chance for Kane Kettle. All kinds of time, he makes the most of it. That's going to put the Woodsman on top, two to one, with 35 seconds to go here in the first. 
will just get play going, and Nelson Jones is explaining to the official why he thinks there should have been a penalty. The official explaining why he doesn't believe there should have. The official winning that argument, and Kettle will bury it on the breakaway. And now Nelson Jones, I think Nelson Jones just got kicked out. Expressing his vehement disapproval and disagreement, he was sent to the penalty box and now he's gone. The second period will, or the first period will end. It's two to one for the Woodsman. We're going to take a two minute break and we'll be back with more of the Northeast Invitational from the Onondaga Nation Arena. Security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility. They also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who game. may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection. And patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars. And for those sports enthusiasts out there, we have the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena. And there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite pen. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to the Northeast Invitational. I'm Stephen Stamp. It is two to one in favor of the Woodsman in this round robin pool play matchup. We have a minute 15 remaining in the penalties to Tylen Dybo and Cameron Simpson. So we stay four on four. Nelson Jones, it looks like he got a two and a 10. So a two and a 10, he is gone from this game. And is that a stick check? Oh, they're just trying to figure out whose stick it was. Some, there's a spare stick floating around. The equipment guy says, hey, is this yours? Do you say, nope? I don't know. Nobody wants it. I'll take it. I didn't bring a stick with me. Should have. We can go out and play catch between games, Greg, in all our spare time. <laughs> <laughs> so Sterling Claflin will take the draw for CTC Elite, they are in the black with purple accents. River Montour lining up to take it for the Woodsman. There we go, that's the stick. I think they're looking for Tylen Dybo's stick. He's in the penalty box without his, he's gonna need that at some point. So they have tracked it down. It has made its way back to him and we may actually be ready to go. And are we live? And we're live, I'm live. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, so Nelson Jones has, how does he have a minute 23 up there? When it was right at the end of the period. I don't get that. I'm not sure if I'm missing something. Someone's gone in to serve that for him. And they say, nope. 
Okay, so CTC is having to send two players in because Nelson Jones got a minor and a 10 minute misconduct. Someone's got to serve each of those penalties. They both start at the same time. So it looks like Albert Appleton is in there. He's going to serve, I think, the 10. And someone else has already gone in to serve the minors. Next game on the docket. Let me find my schedule again. Everything's moving around on us. Here we go. Next up after this one, we will have the Oneida Braves making their debut of the day against the Utica Yeti. That should be a fun one. Games will go all afternoon. After the Yeti and Braves matchup, we've got a 3 p.m. start between the Woodsmen. They'll be back on the floor, assuming they get to finish this one at some point against the Maine Northmen. And then the Braves will be back out to play the Onondaga Warriors, who won their first game of the day 7-4 against the Utica Yeti in a very good game. Close through most of it, a little bit of a pull away towards the end. It was back and forth, in and out of the stop time as the Yeti kept getting back within three. The Warriors kept making it a four goal lead. It is three minutes of stop time at the end of the third period if the gap is less than three. A little goals. mix up on that. And now, they've just put one person in, I guess, to serve both. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what's going on. We're four on four. No, we're five on four. Okay, so the one player is going to serve both. I think that's Albert Appleton serving it. He's going to be in there for 12 minutes. So most of the second period. And then he'll be fresh legs in the third for CTC. They trail by one. Woodsman with that late, slight lead. A four on, well, it's a five on three. Oh, what a rip. That will end that power play. An absolute blast by, by Deer from the top. And Appleton's trying to leave, but he's got to get back in there. He's still got to serve the 10. Nice try, though. Let's get back to the goal. Deer with that blast from the top just sneaks it past the left foot of Kobe Gibson. That's going to make it a 3-1 to one lead for the Woodsman. And now we're 5-on-5, five five, and it seems like we should be 4-on-4 four four because Simpson and Dybul are still in there, and they're going to be released in 10 seconds, and I think... I was thinking they might just wait until the faceoff and then let them go. A little discussion. Yeah, those penalties are over. They're going to let them out. Those guys, Simpson and Dybul, will go to the benches. Nope, they're not going to let them out. So we are live again. Sorry for the interruptions. We've had some network issues, but we are on game number six of the weekend. CTC Elite and the Woodsman. Third game of the day. Here we are in pool play. It is the Northeast Invitational. I'm Stephen Stamp with Blue Squatch Productions. It is three to one in favor of the Woodsman. And all alone on the crease, what on earth were the Woodsmen doing there? They were surprised, I think, by the restart. And Cree Cather is just a deadly finisher. Gets a goal back for CTC Elite. And the Woodsmen having a little chat about what were we doing there? Sterling Claflin ready for the draw. He'll be up against River Montour once again. It's a one goal game in this second of three 15 minute running time periods. Stay tuned for our next game, which will be the Oneida Braves and the Utica Yeti. And thanks to Greg Beach from Blue Squatch Productions for setting it up. Once that, this game ends, just leave your YouTube running. It'll jump right to the next game. You'll be automatically there all weekend. Great chance for River Montour, and he just lost it as he went up to get the ball and tried to get the shot off. Here comes Hemming the other way. What CTC taking their time. There's a shot. That one's well off target for Mitch White. And 
that's going to be a 30 second violation on CTC. Doug Hemming puts the ball down, not quite to the liking of his woodsman opponent, who gives him a little bit of a chop for his pleasure. Pass across to the near side, here's Deer. He goes over to Lee Thomas, and Thomas will hand it off. All right, we are back to five on five. We are back to some flow. We are back to a rep from Lee Thomas. It was partially blocked, and Kobe Gibson will leave it there. Nice little bouncer out of the crease from Pierce Smith. Here comes Mitch White. He's taking up, taking some more offensive shifts with Nelson Jones out of the game. White has stepped up into that role. He's got some skill, Mitch White. Certainly no slouch. I mean, Nelson Jones is a pretty special talent. Here's a three on two. They go for the backdoor quick stick or the backdoor pass attempt coming off the bench transition. Didn't quite work out. Simpson hangs on to it. He'll jog up over center and pass it off, leaving it there for Justin McKinney. McKinney will head to the bench. Simpson tried to go up with one hand to get that. It bounced away. Jones tried to get it. It's still loose. Heads up play by Creek Cathers as he was going off the floor. Did not re-engage and step ahead. That's how you, that leads to too many men penalties. When you're heading to the bench, see the ball come and change your mind. Here's a breakaway chance for Mark Henderson. He had a nice assist earlier. That shot's not what he was hoping for as it gets away from him. Great behind the back pass. And then Henderson not ready. He's on his offside. Probably a better idea to have a shot there for Lee Thomas. And CTC will get it and they'll run up over center. Ball in the stick of Doug Hemming. Or sorry, that's Shane Cook. Cook lobs it back up to Seneca. Creek Cathers, oh, banks it off the crossbar. Comes back out, scooped up, and they regain possession. Seneca gets a pick. Nice two-man defense. Leave Seneca no option but the outside shot. That's going to roll for an over back, but they can keep playing. It's a breakaway. Great chance for Brad McGowan. Just off the shoulder or the arm of Kobe Gibson. Another chance, though, McGowan. Oh, he didn't catch that. He was ready to shoot. Trying to take the pass from Angus LeBourne. Harry McComber will head out on D as CTC was trying to go forward. Albert Appleton. Here comes McComber. Great lacrosse family, the McCombers, the McCombers. So many family connections in this game. Here's Nikki Snow passing over. I believe Nikki Snow related to Heron Snow, if I'm not mistaken. I might be. It's a putback attempt. Didn't quite work out. And that's going to be a crease violation. It'll be CTC possession. Pierce Smith makes the outlet pass. CTC sets up in the offensive zone. Boy, it's been a really scrambly back and forth stretch. No scoring, but some chances. That one gets through to Trace Hill. He was too far deep, too deep. So he holds on to it, heads up play, gets to Creek Cathers, but that one goes off the crossbar and then through the crease was Cathers. So that's going to be Woodsman Ball. Nearing the midway point of this second period. Lee Thomas looking for someone, gets it over, and Deer steps back, shoots for Thomas. Nice pass for Deer. Over to Thomas, his shot, and they say him back in, and he is correct. Oh, and a player has dropped near the Woodsman bench, grabbing his left knee is Angus LeBourne. Oh no, he is not looking very comfortable. Oh, and LeBourne is heading straight to the door at the end of the rink. He's going to the dressing room, trying not to put too much weight on it. Let somebody help you, Angus. That looks very painful. He is a tough man. But it's okay, we don't mind waiting while somebody helps you off the floor, really. There we go, medical personnel will go and give him a hand. He's just gonna sit. He just wants to get out of the way and let everyone keep playing. 
And he is in some pain. Woodsman will have the ball. Still five on five. So much action today and into tomorrow. Here at the Northeast Invitational, the first annual. Looking into the prize money and things available for the tournament as we move forward. Ball gets loose in the corner. Collision, the Woodsman player wanted to call. Check for behind her boarding, he's not getting it. Oh. Interference call. So that's going to be a CTC power play. It's going to be Keith Printup going to the box. So a chance for CTC Elite to even things up. Cam Simpson will start with it at the top. He is one of the coordinators of this team. Puts a lot of work in it. He's saying he has some CTC gear at one of the vendor tables. Lots of vendors here on site. You should come check them out in the vendor room and along the uh, walkway. That shot got down low, got away from Trevor Hill. And then a CTC player going for the rebound, absolutely buried. It was Mitch White getting in there. And it's going to be Woodsman possession with a minute 25 to go here in the penalty to Keith Printup, who's an interference call. Nikki Snow thought about the shot. Nice awareness to hear Appleton coming in from the bench and avoid him. Down to the crease. That's going to be a violation. And then Appleton knocks over Mark Henderson. Henderson is going after him. Grabs him, cross-checks him. It's getting pretty heated. Always happens in a tournament where there's lots of games. Or play. Oh, and Appleton takes a punch. He is the least favorite member of CTC right now. Multiple Woodsman players going after him. He's just gonna unbuckle his helmet. Looks like Ed Lewis, he's got his helmet off. He's being restrained. Mark Henderson going and still talking to Appleton, who is very calmly just walking away, keeping his cool, incited a lot of that. Like he generated much of the excitement. You can see his check before got Henderson riled up and Appleton to his credit is just gonna stay calm here. So we'll have to see what happens as we go forward. Woodsmen are very upset. They're not happy at all with Appleton's con conduct. But they kind of lost their cool afterwards. That'll be sorted out. We'll remind you that you can see all the games this weekend on Blue Squatch Productions. You should go to Blue Squatch on YouTube and subscribe. Join the thousand plus subscribers on the page. Greg Beecher and Charity Beecher doing a great job along with their helpers. I guess I'm one of the helpers. <laughs> to bring you lacrosse content from all across the sport. They're gonna have a busy summer. Lots of announcements coming, lots of coverage coming on Blue Squatch Productions. It is the place to be to check out Can-Am Lacrosse, FNLA, Nabble, all kinds of action. And tomorrow will be the bronze medal game at 10 a.m. Sorry, fifth place game at 10 a.m. Getting ahead of myself. The bronze medal game at 11.15. And then the gold medal game at 12.45. The 
the second period may end by the time we get this sorted out and rolling as there's about a minute and a half to play. Cam Simpson over trying to sort out exactly what's happening. And we're not going to see until play starts because the penalties don't go up on the board until play starts because it's running time. You don't want the penalties to be ticking away before play gets going. So they will all be set on the board and then input or ready to, they will take effect. This is a very close game, very low scoring. It's gonna remain low scoring because we had about three minutes to tick off the game while wow, that was all getting sorted. There was a lot going on. Looks like Mark Henderson is over in the box and he seems to be the only one. Not sure if somebody was ejected. We should hear shortly. I know Ed Lewis came in, was pretty heated. Albert Appleton is in the box. He and Henderson having some words. Or sorry, that's not Henderson, that is, I think that's Deer. Yeah, that's Deer getting heated and his guy running the door is telling him to get back. Deer, he wants the attention of Appleton and he is definitely saying, I'm watching you. So it's five on four for CTC and we'll see what goes up and we'll get the announcements from Kent Lyons shortly, our wonderful PA man. We're into the final minute of the second period and Keith Printup's been released. Amidst all that, his penalty expired. So as we get going, and there's nothing up on the board. We'll have to wait and see what Kent says. Hard rip stopped by McComber, but it's... Play's blown down. I think we're gonna go to the intermission here and everything will get sorted out and we're gonna come back for what should be a very exciting third period of Northeast Invitational Action here on Blue Squatch Productions. I'm Stephen Stamp, thanks for being with us. Thanks for your patience. We've had some technical issues, some internet issues, and we've had some things happening. A lot happening. We're gonna come back for the third period. Make sure you're with us. We will see you soon. Watch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze! It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games. Children, adults, and elders alike along the north south pathway now called Route 81 nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hode Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance, security, and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility. They also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home-cooked specials and has a very diverse selection. And patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars. And for those sports enthusiasts out there, we have the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena. And there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as 
beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite... All right, sorry everybody, I just realized what's happening. So they linked the two games together because of the internet stability. This is a different game. Uh, thank you so much for the patience. Hopefully tonight, but I don't want to make any promises because of how busy these get sometimes. But by tomorrow or Monday at the latest, these games will be uploaded. I should have them by tomorrow. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We really appreciate all the support. All right, welcome back to the Cross Friends. I'm about the only one who didn't hear what Greg was just saying because he was using my headset to talk to you all, but I think he was apologizing for the technical, technical issues. They've been resolved by the staff here, and we're up and running. Oh, but it says we're still at the Warriors Yeti game, which was the last game. Yeah. It's all a bit of a blur for us, to be honest. <laughs> we're rolling, and thank goodness, because we are back with an exciting game, and it is a major to Mark Henderson. So it's a five on four for five minutes for CTC. Appleton is also in the box, so they must have had initial offsetting penalties. Haven't heard Kent Lyons with the call yet. So, actually, sorry, I think it's a double minor for Mark Henderson. It was four minutes, not five. So a chance here. Cam Seneca is going to wait for his cohort. They will go to the power play. They still need one more. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we're supposed to be four and four. It's, we're not. Trevor Jones joins the fray. Behind the back pass. There's a shot, that one's well wide. It's gonna be tracked down there. Vince Thomas lets one rip to try and get a reset. Oh, and that goes in. I was looking up the floor where it looked like the pass was going. You may have been as well. Oh, you did. We, I, did we get it? No. <laughs> Caught it right on top of the crease. What a play. Was that Vince Thomas? I think it was. And that will wipe out the first half of the double minor. So again, this is game six. But where is it? Sorry, I'm just trying to open it up again. I, I got off of everything online to try to not use any bandwidth while we were having the issues. I'm just hooking it back up. Just want to say hello to my family back in Marmara. There's a bit of a gathering of the clan with my lovely and talented wife, Carrie Jane McMaster Stamp. Welcoming my uh, sister Jane Hall, my mom, Jillian Stamp, and Hawkeye, Jane's dog is there apparently, father-in-law Ken McMaster, and our dog Millie, everybody hanging out, having some lunch, having a good time, watching some lacrosse from the Northeast Invitational. We are glad to have you with us. Simpson hanging on to the ball here as they get the full set, the full offensive set out for this power play. Simpson pulls it down, ducks through, loses the ball. He's so steady usually with the possession. And there's a nice save by Nyma Comer on that shot from Trevor Hill. Woodsman have it, that pass, trying to get through traffic. It was River Montour trying to hit Jaden Jimerson. Didn't get it, and here's Simpson looking shovel pass. That's just behind Creek Hathers. Ball still on the floor, everyone battling for it. Just three, or sorry, a minute and 15 left on the power play. The second half of it. Here's Simpson going to the net, scores! Tucks it in over the shoulder, what a great play. Cam Simpson, boy, he can make things happen on his own when he needs to. 
see him just come out of the corner, tiptoeing across the top of the crease, drags Nybicomber with him just enough to open a little slot over the shoulder. And we get a great look at that goal. That this We're looking at the goal before. I didn't hear the announcement, Greg. Who scored it? Here's this one, Cam Simpson. Look at that. You can barely see enough space for that ball to fit in there. So Simpson puts CTC up four to three. We're back to even strength. Still some players in the box. That's Ed Lewis for, oh, and now Keith Printup has just flipped, has taken a penalty. He's just used his stick to flip up the face mask of Sterling Claflin. Claflin looks around, sees the call is coming. It's really heating up down there. That's gonna be an over and back. It gets away and they're gonna have a high sticking call to print up. Woodsman getting frustrated, it is costing them. The other penalty just ended. Appleton and Henderson will be released. It's gonna be interesting to, interesting to see because certainly the Woodsman were making it clear. High sticking. To Appleton that they were watching him. Thank you so much everyone for your patience. And uh, it may have been a while ago, but Stephanie, Stephanie Elliott, let me check. Yes, this is the 1230 game. I'm not sure how long ago you asked that because I was off offline. That ball gets away. It's gonna be an over and back and it'll be Woodsman possession. Jaden Jimerson has been out there putting in the work just points up the floor and says, somebody go get that. I am going to the bench for a break. So they started in the corner with Deer tossing it up to Lee Thomas. Thomas left it for Nikki Snow. Those visible yellow green shooting strings. Nice duck underneath the pass across. I'm not sure Kettle was in a very good position to receive that one. Thomas recovers it. Here's a chance. Oh, what a hard shot by Deer, but that one's stopped by Gibson. CTC will head back into the offensive zone for their power play setup. Shane Cook carries it in, and there's another penalty coming to the Woodsman. Going over the top, trying to strip it there was Kane Kettle. Simpson fighting through everybody. Trying to pick it up with one hand, runs into his own man in Vince Thomas, and eventually the one hand pickup. Nice job, Kane Kettle, reach out and grab it. We're gonna have, with 30 seconds left in the last penalty, much of which will be killed on the slow walk to the box by Deer. Two minutes for White on a hold. Cognac Deer will go off. Thank you to Kent Lyons for reminding me of the pronunciation. I was just waiting to hear it. I knew he had that one. Cognac Deer. It's a five on three. No, it's five on four again. Sorry, it's the other penalty again. The print up was just expired. There, he just comes out now. And that, now they're five on five, and that's too many. He can't go and join the play. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, they're going to blow things down. Now, CTC wants a too many call, but the the official in the penalty box sent print up out because his penalty ended but they already it ended while play was stopped so S S woodsman put a player out on the floor and then print up was sent because he's not actually released they shouldn't have sent someone out they should have actually waited and sent him out once play started again but you don't get a penalty the officials are responsible. There's a lot going on. I'm not blaming this on them, but the officials are responsible for making sure the manpower situation is right when play starts. So it's not going to be a too many men penalty here. And we'll just get things rolling with about a minute to go in the Gunyat Deer penalty for Woodsman. There's Hill at the top. They try and pass it back through the middle. It didn't quite get caught by Trace Hill. Comes near side to Creek Hathers. That goes off a defender's stick. It's reached up and grabbed by Nye McComber. He has a man down the floor, but he's covered. So nice job by McComber to find the intermediate route being run by Angus LeBourne Jr. 
Angus Sr. still sitting on a bench at the end of the rink. When the camera pans back, you'll be able to see if you look a bit to our left of Nye McComber, you'll see him. Another penalty coming now. This one is an illegal cross check to CTC. And with five seconds left on the Deer penalty. Now Deer shouldn't be released until play starts. There you go. Shirley Hill is laying down the law over in the penalty box, making it clear he gets out Illegal when play resumes. And then the CTC penalty will be in effect and they will have a full two minute power play, but they have to wait. And Deer's gonna go and join the offense, I'm sure. No, nope, he's going to the bench. Oh, they actually had five guys out. Technically too many, but again, it started. That's gonna be a crease violation as Tylen Dybo was grabbing that ball right on top of the cylinder and stepped in. CTC will start. It's chippy, folks. It is a pretty fun game. Here comes Brody LeBourne. Shoots hard and low and it's in. Does it get through? It did. Brody LeBourne just muscles that one through the legs. Look at this on the replay. You see he just blasts it low. McComber gets a fair bit of it, but not quite enough. That's a shorthanded goal for Brody LeBourne making a difference in this game. The score extends to five to three. The shorthanded marker, huge for CTC. Again, CTC won their game this morning against the Maine North in 12 to six, which means if they can win again today, they are into the semifinals. They will be number one in in the, their pool in Pool B. And that would set up the Northman Woodsman game. That's after the whistle, that's gonna be maybe another penalty. But the Northman and the Woodsman playing at three o'clock. If CTC holds on to this, that one is a win and you're in to the semifinals battle. Conversation going on. Were you on the air there? <laughs> Craig Beecher has Firekeepers on the mind. As he said, they're probably talking about how good the Firekeepers restaurant is. It's going to be CTZ possession on a face on a crease violation. We've got 423 to play. It's a 5-3 lead for CTC. The Woodsmen are gonna try to push to get back, but right now Cam Simpson and CTC have possession. Thanks once again for your patience, everyone. Thanks to the staff here for getting things sorted out with the booster to uh, make sure we're back up and running. Jason Spotted Horse getting things sorted out. I recognize that name for one of the uh, mail slots in the office, along with Sherwin Williams, the director. Oh, nice. is that Angus LeBourne? He is back in. He was sitting. You're not going to see him on the bench right now. He has come back in. Outlet pass. It's a two on O. Oh. Justin McKinney is going to toss it over and Doug Hemmick kind of took himself out of position by heading off to his offside. And now at the other end, it's a no look. Naked look that time for Nikki Snow. We had one at one end, then one at the other. It's a five for four game coming up to the final three minutes. We're gonna hit three minutes with uh, before the faceoff happens. So the clock will stop right there. We've got three minutes. Uh, they kept it going. Made a liar out of me. They stopped it at 2.58. So we will have 2.58 of stop time at the end of this third period. What a game, CTC leading the Woodsman five to four. I am Steven Stamp, very pleased to be bringing you this Northeast Invitational Action on Blue Squatch Productions. Thanks to Ron Kogan and everyone here for making this happen. That pass didn't quite connect. It was just a bit too high for Trevor Hill. Woodsman coming back the other way. Hard bounce pass, that's a nice play. I like that one. They get ahead to Nikki Snow, just scored. That pass was made by Jaden Jimerson. Just wanted to give him the credit for the nice play. Hard four check, or back check. That one stopped by Kobe Gibson. Appleton looks up the floor. Got a slashing call coming.
It's going to be Angus LeBourne Jr. No, he's going to the bench. Sorry, who is Two it? Two minutes for slashing. Bench? Oh, it's Sterling Claflin with the slash. So, with 2.25 to play, CTC up by one. Woodsman on the power play. Jaden Jimerson has it at the top. Gets it back. Perimeter passing to start things off. Up to Jimerson. Angus LeBourne with the rip. Chest protector stopped by Gibson. Oh, breakaway. Hemling, Hemming, Doug Hemming. Great hustle by Knut Cognac Deer to get back and take away the breakaway chance. And Hemming, fairly happy at this point to go into penalty kill mode, hand it off to Trace Hill. He's going to go for a bit of a trot. Nikki Snow on him. Double team help coming from Kane Kettle. They lob it back to Creek Hathers. Four on the shot clock. Simpson will let one rip. They're going to run out of time on the 30. A minute 15 to go on the power play. A minute 38 now in the third period. If things were to be all tied up after the end of this period, we would go to a shootout three per team. They're trying to tie it up there, and you can see how upset Deer is that he missed on that one. And CTC will take their timeout. Sorry, that was Kane Kendall with the shot. Each team has one timeout during the three 15 minute running time periods and three minutes of stop time at the end. And Nye McComber gets a drink brought to him by teammate Dagoa McComber. Kanye Deer having a talk with the official, just going over some some details. <laughs> what a tournament! Things really ramping up as they tend to do in a tournament. Teams start to see each other more. They start to realize, you know, the importance grows as the game goes on. Again, CTC with a win here would clinch first place in Pool A. If the Woodsmen win, everything's kind of up for the grabs in the pool. Although, their win this morning, 12 to six over Maine, puts CTC in pretty good shape. But you know they don't want to be worrying about what happens later in the day. They'd rather go in as a two and O Pool A, or Pool B first place team. And that's an over and back, Creek Hathers. And now the Woodsmen taking their timeout with 105. You can see Lee Thomas immediately called the timeout. They're going to set something up. I would, th yeah, they have already got Nyma Comer over to the bench to get the extra attacker. Now it's interesting because they're on the power play. I'm not. Is it really better to have six on four than five on four? And is the whatever benefit you have worth the risk of pulling your goalie? My guess is they'll go with a five on four and have someone up at about center to guard against an over and back. We'll see. And we have the little girl that got either hit or scared by a ball that came out of play and into the stands is running back and forth downstairs. She was an absolute trooper. Very upset for about 30 seconds. A few tears were shed, a few wails were wailed. And then she said, no, I'm good to go. And now she is zipping back and forth with her sparkly shoes, lighting up. She's got those light up runners to every step. Okay, yeah, they've sent Nyman Comer back to the box as we get back to the game. They will stay with the five on four. Shooter spot, they come back to the top. Hard underhand shot is blocked by Cam Simpson. Reverse whip attempt, that doesn't work. Is that, oh, it's stopped by Gibson then. A little fake and running out is Brody LeBourne. Nice play, it's a two on one. Shane Cook wisely pulls up. He and Trace Hill were running down. Time is their ally right now though. The clock ticking away that is. Simpson can't pick up that ball. Now the penalty expires, we're back to even. And if the Woodsmen get it back, they'll, I'm sure now, will pull McComber. Triple team on Simpson, they eventually get it away from him. There are only two seconds left on the 30. And McComber is sprinting to the bench, making like Christian Del Bianco, passing his teammates as they head over. 
Interesting, Shane, or Cam Simpson stays down in the offensive zone, so it's just a five on four. And that will do it. What a game. The final score, five to four for CTC. They finish two and oh, oh my. Angus LeBourne going after Sterling Claflin. And suffice to say, I don't think we're gonna be seeing handshake, a handshake line after this one. What a game, gritty battle right to the final moment. And CTC goes 2-0, they will be first in Pool B, which puts them in the 745 game. And our next game will come, I don't know, pretty soon. What time is it? It's 132. Next game is at 145, the Oneida Braves and the Utica Yeti. Thanks for being with us, across friends. What? Okay, you have to skip the next link because of all the technical issues we had. The next one that comes up will be for this game. Oh, there is a handshake line and it's getting testy. Okay, so I was right and wrong. Anyway, skip it, come back, just go to Blue Squatch Productions on YouTube, get restarted, come up with, watch whatever's on. We'll see you in about 15 minutes to ensure a safe and secure facility. They also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today.